A K-State animal scientist had the opportunity to speak at the Southern Plains Drought Summit in Pratt, Kansas. During his presentation, he touched on the supplementation and mineral considerations for pasture cattle during drought. With Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart. Justin Wagner says that as producers plan for the upcoming grazing season, with the prospect of continuing drought conditions, producers should consider the merits of supplemental feeding cattle on drought-stressed pastures. One of the major issues that a lot of cattlemen are going to face in, in this area is just simply a, a shortage of forage. Uh, we're looking at uh, um, you know, a significant reduction even in the, you know, uh, with recent rainfall and moisture events that, that have occurred. Uh, so for the, the most part, we may be looking at a reduced number of grazing days on our pastures. And so in reality, most producers get, you know, somewhere between 100 and 120 days, at least now here in the outlook of a, of a grazing season in front of them. That, that would be a pretty optimistic picture. So we're really looking at supplementation strategies, uh, what we might have to do in terms of maybe pulling cows off of grass early, uh, strategies such as early weaning. Uh, on the supplementation picture, one of the things that's a little bit different, I think, in terms of drought response is really the difference between energy and protein. You know, typically on a cow supplementation talk, we're talking about winter needs. And in those type of situations, protein is really our biggest challenge. We have an abundant supply of what I would call moderate to, to low quality forage, which is typically deficient in protein. So we've got the enough energy in front of the cow. We're really deficient in protein as we look towards a winter supplementation program. Well, as we move into a drought situation, that abundant supply of hopefully higher quality forage uh, may or may not be in place. And so really our situation there is, is looking towards the energy side of the picture, either doing some replacement with, with hay it is a pretty common strategy. Uh, maybe we want to look at some byproducts. But really the, the key thing to focus in on is that our primary need to cows on drought stress pastures in a limited uh, forage availability situation is really energy uh, instead of protein. And so that changes the picture in terms of how we price our supplements. You know, they need to be priced on a cost per unit of TDN or a cost per unit of uh, net energy for maintenance value as a way to compare a number of the different supplements. You mentioned some of the other um, uh, supplements that you can use. What Can you kind of elaborate a little bit more on some of those? Sure. I think today's cattleman probably has more options in terms of supplemental feedstuffs than we may have ever had in the, the history of cattle production here in the U.S. Uh, when we take in and encompass, you know, the traditional range cubes or cake that we've used, uh, today we have byproducts. We have a variety of, you know, hay and, and silage options that are out there as well. Uh, we've also got products like tubs and, and lick tanks and, and all of those things. And so really there's, you know, there's a lot of different options on the table. And, and one of the, the key things I really come back to a lot of times is I, I think it's, it's hard for us to make a decision in terms of what we should feed. And so, you know, the, the take-home message there is, you know, we're looking for energy, cost per unit of energy basis. The protein, there is some emphasis there, but really trying to separate out some of those different options. Uh, you also talked about uh, cows can be fed in dry lot situations. What was your answer? Yes, uh, there is a quite a bit of research that shows you know we can take cows and put them in a dry lot, uh, maybe a limit fed or or more of a maintenance type ration, uh, pull them off of those pastures to reduce any potential damages to the rangeland. And in some instances, that may be our best option is to look at at shutting some of those cows up and and essentially delivering them a ration on a daily basis. Now. You know, there is going to be a cost associated with that. It is a higher labor investment than, than being out on grass. But in the, you know, if the other options are limited and we've made the decision that we want to keep those cows, you know, looking at higher replacement values for those females, that may be our best option to hold some of these cow herds together as we come into this third year of drought. You also mentioned early weaning factors into a drought response plan. Can you elaborate? Yeah, I definitely think it should. This is the, the concept of early weaning is, is weaning a calf, I'm going to say, at approximately 100 days of age or less. Uh, more conventional, you know, weaning programs, we would be at a calf that's 150 to 180 days of age. Uh, and so in terms of a drought management plan, what's nice about early weaning is we take that cow that's essentially, you know, got a calf at side. We've rem we're removing all the nutrient needs associated with lactation. 
which reduces the cow's nutrient requirements, um, and it also saves us forage. Uh, somewhere in the instance of, you know, basically every day we, you know, wean a, every week we wean a calf, we get uh, several days back on the cow side. And as I look at drought response, it's really a, a, you know, a game of grazing days. You know, how many days can I stay out on grass? And, you know, for the most part, if producers can look at going out to grass for maybe 100 days, bringing those calves back in, weaning the calves, it's going to, to really cut down the the cow's nutrient requirements, her forage needs also decline, and so there's just an overall savings in terms of grass production, and and her requirements then be, it actually becomes really easy or relatively easy to meet her nutrient requirements because we've got a non-lactating cow in the first trimester of gestation. You couldn't ask for a cow that really has a lower nutrient requirement when we put a strategy like that into place. So I think it's definitely a component as we look towards you know a, a situation where we may have some limited grazing options. Sounds like the uh, producers are going to have to definitely watch closely as these, this drought continues. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you, you definitely have to monitor things coming forward. Um, cow condition probably has more value to a cattleman than it ever has before, so closely monitoring body condition score. Uh, if, we, if we lose condition in this situation, it's going to be, you know, A, costly for us to put it back on in terms of where our feedstuff values are currently at. Uh, and we just may not have the option of some, some lower cost alternatives, although I think a lot of us would argue feed is always an expense uh, in a budget sheet. So, you know, it's always expensive for us to do that, but it's, it's really just monitoring those things a little bit closer uh, and, and capturing every bit of efficiency we can in terms of uh, helping folks hold on to these cows. People are starting to use a lot of the dry distillers. Can you explain a little bit about that, too, and, and uh, whether that be a good supplement to use? Yeah, there's a variety of the, the byproducts. Uh, dry distillers is one of them, corn gluten feed. Uh, those are all um, relatively decent supplements in terms of, uh, you know, they're typically a high fiber, low starch uh, energy source, which is which is good, although, you know, our primary concern is, is still just energy. They do bring a fair amount of protein to the table. The other thing that both DDGs and corn gluten will bring to the table to a cattleman in this situation is a fair amount of phosphorus. Uh, both of those products, uh, you know, fed at, a, I would say, a typical supplementation level of two to three pounds will provide almost as much phosphorus to the diet as four ounces of a 10% phosphorus mineral. And so if we take that into account, uh, phosphorus is also one of the most expensive components of a mineral program, so there is some cost savings there. The other side of that is um, in drought, uh, in response to drought, usually our phosphorus levels or in dormant forage, if we don't see a significant green up, will be lower. And so we may have less phosphorus coming into the diet from our uh, forage and component on the native grass situation this year. So there's a couple of different advantages there. With Ag AM in Kansas, I'm Devin Stewart.